Welcome to the General Service Administration's Office of Government-Wide Policies Federal Aviation Interactive Reporting System, or FAERS, training video. In this video, we will be covering What is FAERS? How to sign in and reset your password General navigation User roles and agency hierarchy Asset management Bulk upload The CAP business case summary Data submission and approval process Reporting The FAERS dashboards The FAERS user search And lastly, FAERS training, documents, and how to contact the FAERS help desk. This training video, along with the FAERS user guide, will assist FAERS users to successfully access and upload data into the FAERS database. The FAERS Information System stands for the Federal Aviation Interactive Reporting System and enables the General Service Administration's Office of Aviation Policy within the Office of Government-Wide Policy to collect and subsequently report operational costs, utilization, and federal aircraft inventory data from federal agencies that operate aircraft in accordance with OMB Circular A-126 Improving the Management and Use of Government Aircraft and FMR 102-33 management of government aircraft. FAERS also provides the capability via the Capital Asset Planning or CAP tool for federal agencies to complete their capital asset planning requirements per OMB Circular A-11 for fleet modernization. Aviation inventory data is collected on an annual basis by fiscal year. The deadline to submit data for the previous fiscal year is December 31st. The FAIR system is open to collect data all year long, and you can also submit quarterly, if you prefer, as long as the data is in by December 31st. To sign into FAIRS, you'll start off by going to the login page at www.fares.reporting.gov. We recommend bookmarking this page for future access. Once on the login page, you are given two options under General User Login. The first will be Max Login via OMB Max, and the second will be your username and password. Below that, there is a GSA single sign on, but that is for GSA staff only. Registered Max Federal Community members may use OMB Max to access fares with their common access cards or personal identity verification card by choosing the Max Login option on the FAERS login page. If you are interested in this login option but are not yet a Max Federal Community user, please visit the following website to register your CAC or PIV card with MAS. If you sign in with your username and password, you will be redirected to a page requiring a verification code sent by email. If you have a mobile number associated with your account, you will also have the option, in addition to email, to set up a two-factor authentication app like Google Authenticator to complete your verification process. When you select the Authenticator app option for the first time, a QR code will appear on your screen. Just go to the Authenticator application you have on your mobile phone and choose to add it by scanning the QR code with your camera. A numerical sequence will appear on your phone's screen Input this token into the verification code field to continue into FAERS. Next time you choose this option, you will only need to retrieve the verification code from the Authenticator app and enter it into the verification code field to get in. If you would like to utilize the Authenticator app verification feature, but don't have your mobile number associated with your account, once you have entered the database, you can do so by clicking on your name dropdown in the top right corner and selecting My Profile. Then click Edit and simply add your cell phone number to the mobile field and save. Now you will be prompted next time you log in to choose the email or authenticator options to verify. For detailed step-by-step -step instructions, a link to the document FAIRS Database Community Login Using Authenticator App can be found below the username and password section on the login page. However, if you have forgotten your password, you will need to click on the Forgot Your Password hyperlink below the username login. When you click on the Forgot Your Password hyperlink, you will be guided to a page that will ask you to input your username and click the Reset Password button. 
The following page will ask you to check your email. You will receive two separate emails for this validation process. The first email will be titled, Your New Fares Password. This email includes a hyperlink to a secure page requesting a verification code. This hyperlink is time sensitive and may only be used once. The second email will be titled GSA Login Code and have a verification code for you. This email will be delivered after you click on the link in the initial email. Input your verification code on the verification page and click Continue. You may now change your password to fit the minimum requirements of eight characters, one letter, and one number. Once completed, you will be automatically logged into the system. You should now be in the FAIRS database and greeted by the FAIRS homepage. At the top of the page, users can utilize the global search feature, which allows you to search terms or numbers associated with all records you have access to in FAIRS. Under the search bar will be a horizontal menu of available pages for you to select. At the center of the page, you'll be welcomed to the FAIRS site. Your user access will be displayed below the title area, followed by a description of FAIRS. On the bulk upload page, designated users can upload their operational or CAS data into FAIRS. The asset assignment page is where users can view all asset assignments, both federal aircraft and CAS, they have access to. Click on the drop down or the expand all button to view the records. Depending on levels of access and role in the system, the assets page is where users will go to search for or create federal aircraft and CAS assets. The Approvals page is only visible to designated approvers to view assets that are pending approval and assigned to them. The Reports page provides the ability to build, read, and share reports based on your data and fares. CAP Business Case Summary is a cradle-to-grave lifecycle management and acquisition planning tool that is based on requirements contained in OMB Circular A-11 Part 2 Aviation Business Case Summary and the Capital Programming Guide. The FAIRS user search helps you find current users for your agency or bureau in the database. Users have the ability to filter by agency, permission set or role, first name, last name, email address, and whether they are active or inactive. The More menu item with the downward pointing arrow allows you to view and navigate to several other menu options your current page will always display the main menu and will not be hidden by the More menu option. The Contact Us page allows you to easily contact the FAIRS help desk through a convenient form. The Training and Documents page provides you with a single page to find helpful training material including the FAIRS training video, FAIRS user guide, and Office of Aviation Policy. The FAIRS dashboard page shows dashboards that graphically display data from FAIRS reports. There are six user roles available in the FAIRS system. User roles are in essence permissions to access certain features and functions which will allow you to fulfill your expected reporting responsibilities. The first is aircraft management, which is responsible for managing assets, both federal aircraft and CAS agreements. The second is operational data entry, which is responsible for entering the operational data for the current quarter and the previous quarter. The third is Data Approver, which is responsible for approving assets, including new assets, transfers, and disposals. The fourth is CAP Data Entry, which is responsible for creating the business case summaries for their agency. The fifth is CAP Approvers, who are responsible for approving the business case summaries. And the sixth are Oversight Users. These are the FAIRS program managers and administrators that are allowed to see all data, with exception of mission-sensitive data, from all the agencies entered into the system. Oversight can add, modify, and approve or reject data. Access to records will depend on what agency and level the user is in. This is what we refer to as the agency hierarchy. Access to information will flow down from the top level. Level 1 being top agency level, for example, the Department of Interior's headquarters. Level 2 would be sub-agency level, for example, USDOI. Level 3 would be Bureau Office level, for example, National Park Service HQ. Level 4 would be sub-Bureau Office level, for example, U.S. Park Police.
Assets are federal aircraft which are owned or borrowed by federal agencies or commercial aviation services, CAS, agreements between the agency and a vendor, whose aircraft the agency uses for federal purposes. By default, you will see a list view of recent assets you have interacted with. You may change the list view to view all CAS assignments, all federal aircraft, legacy data, my CAS agreements, and my federal aircraft. You may pin a list view to make it your default by selecting the list view and clicking the pin button to the right of the list view name. You may also search for assets using the search bar and filter assets by clicking the funnel icon on the right side of the screen. To get started, from the asset page, click the new asset button. Depending on your access, you will be presented with the following options in the drop-down list. Acquisition Alternative will capture the aircraft alternatives being considered for acquisition as part of the CAP process. CAS agreements will store data about a commercial aviation service agreement. Federal aircraft will store data about a federal aircraft. Once you have selected the record type for the data you're submitting, click Continue to start entering your data. With whichever record type you choose, any field with a red asterisk next to it must be filled out before being saved. Otherwise, an error message will display and prevent you from saving. If you have any confusion over what a field means or requires, hover your cursor over the icon of the eye within a circle. This will display the help text to help further assist you in entering the correct data into the field. When an aircraft is no longer in use, Use the Disposal section on the Asset Record to manage the disposal information. FAIRS will allow the reporting of costs for a disposed aircraft for a period of 365 days after the aircraft has been disposed of. Please note, all four disposal fields must be filled out together in order to save the Asset Record with the disposal information. Once complete, go ahead and save your data. For Federal aircraft that are mission sensitive, meaning an agency needs to hide certain fields on the Federal Aircraft Record, you can select the Mission Sensitive Aircraft checkbox. You can make a Federal Aircraft Mission Sensitive when creating or editing a Federal Aircraft Record page. Once the Mission Sensitive checkbox is selected, there are eight fields that will become embargoed and hidden from view. Registration Number, Serial Number, Primary Mission, Secondary Mission, Aircraft Location City, Aircraft Location State, Aircraft Zip Code, and or Foreign Location. To see the values of the embargoed fields, you would need to go to the Asset Attribute section on the Asset Record page and click on the related record. For CAS agreements, aircraft management users have the option to submit CAS agreements for approval. If the Approval Needed checkbox is selected on the CAS agreement after saving the record, the asset assignment must be created for the owning agency before submitting for approval. If the Approval Needed checkbox is not selected after saving, then only create the asset assignment for the owning agency. An asset assignment record will need to be created in order to associate an agency to an aircraft. This will determine who has access to edit the asset and create operational data against the asset. Once an asset assignment is created, then the asset can be submitted for approval. Approval is required for federal aircraft, but optional for CAS agreements, depending on whether or not the approval needed checkbox is selected. To create an asset assignment, you will need to go to the Associated Asset Record page, click the Asset Assignment tab, then click on the New button. You will be prompted to select a record type, either CAS Agreement Asset Assignment or Federal Aircraft Asset Assignment. Make your selection, then click the Next button. You will need to type the account name in the Organization field, or use the lookup icon to search for the name. Search results will automatically be presented as you type in the Organization field. You may select an organization from the results. For CAS agreement, only the organization and asset are required. New Federal Aircraft Assignments require the assignment type to be selected from the drop-down list. The Asset field will also need to be completed. Once you have input your data, click the Save button to save the record. You will be redirected to the asset assignment you just created. 
You also have the option to click Save and New to complete another asset assignment immediately. Upon the creation of a federal aircraft asset, users can only create asset assignments with the assignment type of owner and the organization as the user's agency level and below. At this time, the Bureau Authorized to Report, or BAR, and Transfer sections will be left blank. The BAR functionality is only available once the asset has been approved. It allows the aircraft owner to designate another agency, bureau, office, or service as the new aircraft custodian. Borrowing agencies will not be able to edit any details regarding the aircraft of the asset assignment record. They can only submit operational data. The transfer of a federal aircraft is the transfer of ownership of an aircraft between one agency to another agency. Therefore, the assignment type will be the owner. Upon approval of the transfer, the previous asset assignment record will turn into previous owner. In order to transfer federal aircraft, active bars have to be ended. As of a certain set date, plus 365 days, as a previous owner, agencies can add cost data, but not hours. Please note, an asset assignment type of bar or transfer can only be recorded on an approved asset that is not currently disposed and the first owning agency must submit for approval to the new owning agency once the record is created. Once the asset is approved, you can begin to enter your operational data, which is the Federal Aircraft or CAS Agreement's asset costs and hours, for the reporting fiscal year. To do so, you will need to select the asset you wish to enter data for, then click the Asset Assignments tab, followed by clicking the Asset Assignments Unique ID. This will bring you to the Asset Assignments Detail page. You may then select the Operational Data tab. Once on the Operational Data tab, click the New button. A pop-up will load and give you the option of creating three different record types, Federal Aircraft Costs, CAS Agreement Costs and Hours, and Federal Aircraft Hours. Select the appropriate record type, then click Next to continue. Enter the data for the record you are creating your record will automatically be assigned to the asset. Required fields are denoted with a red asterisk. All record types require the input of the start and end date of the reporting period. Note that the reporting periods are now by fiscal year. When you have completed entering your data, click Save to save your work. If you wish to make more entries for the same asset, you may also click the Save and New button, which will allow you to create a new record for the asset. It is important to note that the federal offset cost and commercial offset costs are required fields and must be a negative number. And under the importing data section in the center of the page. Once you are ready to move forward, click on the template type drop down list. There are three record types that can go through the bulk upload process. CAS Agreements, CAS Operational Data, and Federal Aircraft Operational Data. So in the drop-down list, you will see three different templates associated with the different record types for you to choose from. Each of these options will have their own separate templates for their individual data fields. When you have chosen your template type, a download template feature will appear under Step 2. Click on the hyperlink to download the template. When you open the file, review the Instructions tab in the spreadsheet to become acclimated with the necessary steps to successfully complete your upload. You will input the data on the following tab, which you can click on at the very bottom of the window. When you're ready to input your data, you can choose to do so manually by filling in the information for each field, or you can paste your data values if you already have them prepared in your system. As you go through the templated process, please be sure you do not modify the template to match your data sequence, and only paste your data and not its formatting. If either of these are done, your file will not be successful when you go to upload into FAIRS. There will also be reference tabs for you to review and verify what your options are for fields with specific values. Once you've added all your data, save your file with a unique name to avoid confusion with future uploads. When your file is ready to be uploaded, go back to the bulk upload page, choose the template type you did as before, and now select the Choose File button under Step 2. In the pop-up window, select the file you created using the template and click Open. You can now complete the process by clicking the Import Data button. 
Once you complete your upload, you will be notified via email if your upload was successful or unsuccessful. If your upload is unsuccessful, an error.csv file will be presented in the notification email or under the Pass Submission Error section at the bottom right of the bulk upload page. The Pass Submission section will show file ID, file name, template type, data uploaded, status, and error CSV fields. Error status will indicate if the file uploaded with errors with an error status, as well as if the file uploaded successfully with a complete status. Click on the hyperlink to download and view your error file. In the error.csv spreadsheet, you will be able to see what data was invalid, and the very last column will tell you exactly why it was not successful, so you can go correct your data file and repeat the upload process again till you're successful. The CAP business case summary records for the acquisition of aircraft are created to document the justification for the acquisition of new or replacement aircraft assets. To start off, from the CAP business case summary menu item, click the New button. This tool, in conjunction with the Conklin and D. Decker Lifecycle Cost Analyzer, or other sources available to the agency, will guide you through the process of creating a business case summary for the following three scenarios. Initial Acquisition, Replacement Acquisition, and Operational Baseline for an asset already in your inventory. After clicking the New button, you'll be prompted to select a CAP Business Case Summary record type. Then click the Next button and fill out the necessary information. The BCS Acquisition Record will capture situations in which additional assets must be acquired to support an expanded mission responsibility for the acquiring organization. The BCS Operational Baseline record will capture an operational baseline for a federal aircraft in an agency's fleet. Each asset already in inventory must have a baseline established, and there can only be one operational baseline per federal aircraft owned by an agency. And the BCS Replacement Acquisition record will capture situations in which existing assets have been or will be retired, and additional assets must be acquired to provide the same capabilities or mission support as the existing assets. Once the CAP BCS record is saved, you will be brought to the CAP BCS record page. From here, you will be able to navigate to different sections of the record, called Related Lists, Add Notes and Attachments, and View Approval History, as well as a history of changes to the record. The approval status will automatically go to In Progress until the record is submitted for approval. On BCS Acquisition and BCS Replacement Acquisition records, you can create multiple BCS-related information records to hold information such as contracts, performance goals, and stakeholder information. The CAP worksheet allows users to assemble operational baselines for the lifespan of an aircraft. You can start your worksheet by navigating to the CAP BCS record page, then click on the CAP worksheet button next to the Submit for Approval button at the top of the page. The worksheet that you're presented with will depend on the BCS record type chosen. Once you have filled in the necessary information, scroll back up to the top of the page and click Continue to Worksheet. The fields listed on the worksheet method page will be the same as the first worksheet, but with the remaining lifespan calculated out by year and a life cycle total at the end. Be sure to save after you fill out your worksheet or you will lose your work. Once your work is done and you've saved your worksheet, you can now generate a PDF for download. After an asset has been created and an asset assignment made, the aircraft management user will submit the asset for approval. Only approval users are able to approve assets and they must be inside the agency hierarchy. From the asset record page, click the submit for approval button on the upper right side of the page. Next you will be prompted to enter a comment. This step is optional. You may proceed without entering any comment. Click on submit on the lower right corner of the pop-up window to proceed to the next step of the approval process. Choose the next approver by typing in their name. The field will automatically start searching as you type and suggest user. You may select a user from the search results. Once an approver has been selected, click the Submit button. Once an asset is submitted for approval, the record is locked and cannot be edited until after the approval is accepted or rejected.
An email will be sent to the approver, notifying them that they have been assigned a record and how they can proceed. You may view the approval history section on the asset detail page by clicking the approval history tab. You will be able to see the details for the asset approval. An approval can be recalled to fix information on the asset record. If you need to modify the data before approval, click on the downward pointing arrow on the right side of the reject button, then click the recall button and enter the reason for recalling the approval in the comments field. Once you click on the recall approval request button, an email will be sent to the approver notifying them that the record has been recalled. Approval users will be able to see assets awaiting their approval on the approvals page. On the approvals page, approvers will be able to view, reassign, and approve or reject an asset that is pending their approval. Once you have reviewed the asset's information and are satisfied, you can click your decision in the approval history section on the upper left side of the page after selecting the checkbox to the left of the approval or selecting the checkbox to the left of the related to to select all approvals and include any comments about your decision. Once you're finished, the assets approval history section will now reflect your decision. You will have access to pre-made reports and will also be able to customize and create your own reports. The data inside the reports will be relative to your access. The FAIRS reports folder contains pre-made and insightful reports for you to generate. You will be able to edit the pre-made FAIRS reports to suit your needs by clicking the edit button located on the upper right of the screen. You can even save as into your personal custom reports folder if you would like to return to your modified report later. The reporting tool is a powerful feature that can be customized by various data types, filters, buckets, summary formulas, groupings, and more, all through a drag and drop functionality for your ease of use. New fields can be added to the report columns or groups by searching for the respective field name or clicking the fields button along the left side of the page. Clicking this button will reveal all fields that can be added to this report, along with summary formulas. These can then be dragged and dropped to the appropriate column or group. You can select multiple fields to add, remove, or reorder. To select multiple fields or columns, press Ctrl for Windows or Command for Mac. When you add multiple fields, they appear in the report in the order selected. You may export a report by clicking the Export button. This button may be hidden by the down arrow next to the Edit button. Click the down arrow, then click Export to export the report. You will then be prompted to select the export view and the format for the report and encoding if supported by the format. The formatted reports will include the report header, groupings, and filter settings. Details only will only export the detailed rows. Use this option to do further calculations or upload to other systems. Detail reports may be downloaded as .xlsx.xls and .csv formats. Formatted reports may only be downloaded in the Excel.xlsx format. To create a brand new report, simply click on the New Reports button at the top of the Reports tab page and select the report type you're looking for. The FAIRS dashboard page gives a graphical representation of FAIRS data. The page contains tabs which allow you to easily view various data. The tabs are FAIRS trend data, federal inventory, aircraft utilization hours, aircraft flight hours, mandatory costs, aircraft costs, and aircraft costs per hour. Several tabs also have filters which can be selected from drop-down lists found at the top of select dashboards. These filters allow you to filter by criteria, including fiscal year, aircraft category, and ownership category. Each tab features charts that graphically represent the appropriate data from the FAIRS reports. To view the reports the chart is pulling data from, simply click on the View Report link on the lower left side of the chart. Hovering over the chart data will grant you more information about that particular area of the chart. Clicking on the chart bar or column will automatically take you to the report providing the chart data. Some charts with larger amounts of data also have scroll bars 
that allow you to scroll and view the full chart. Clicking the icon of four outward pointing arrows on the upper right side of the chart will allow you to view a full screen view of the chart in a pop-up window. Clicking the X on the upper right of the full screen chart will close it and allow you to return to the dashboard you were previously on. The refresh button on the upper right side of the dashboard component allows you to refresh the dashboard to update the data to the most recent data. Clicking the downward pointing arrow next to the refresh button reveals the download button. Clicking download allows you to download an image of the respective dashboard. The FAIRS user search allows you to search FAIRS users in your agency. You are able to filter your results by selecting permission set and if the user is active or not. You may also input first and last name and email address. Leaving a field blank will return all results without filtering by that field. If all fields are left blank, then all users will be returned. The results may then be exported as a CSV file by clicking the Download CSV button or viewed on the page. If you have any questions, please utilize the user guide on the FAIRS login page, training and documents page, and or reach out to the FAIRS help desk by clicking the help desk link at the bottom of every FAIRS page or utilizing the form on the Contact Us page. The form on the Contact Us page will automatically input the application based on the user that is currently logged in. Enter your sub-application, request type, and subject, followed by the description. Please include your question or description of the issue you are requesting assistance with. You may also upload files to include with your case, such as a screenshot or other helpful information, for the help desk staff to efficiently resolve your issue. When complete, click the Create a Case button. The Training and Documents page features useful information including the FAIRS User Guide, FAIRS Training Video, and Office of Aviation Policy. Clicking the links will allow you to view or download the linked media. This FAIRS training video may be watched directly from this page by clicking the play button, so you may easily refer to it without the need to leave the FAIRS application. The FAIRS user guide will provide you with a complete overview of the functions and processes of the FAIRS application. You may download it by clicking the download button located at the top of the guide. The Office of Aviation Policy provides a link to the Office of Government-Wide Policy Review. Thank you for viewing this FAIRS training video.